My name's Jocelyn. And I'm Peter. And we're gonna show you how we took our living room from this to this. Yay! I was inspired by Erica from Peony and Honey's amazing slatted mantle design, as well as several other dark walled homes like these. Knowing how big of a project this was gonna be, kinda of hard to know where exactly to start off. So first, you find a friend who loves building things as much as you do, and then you make a plan. Then you start your prep work. That includes taking the previous owner's light fixtures off the walls, yeah. priming and painting, putting together the bookshelves and taking everything else off the wall. If you take a look at our plan, you can see that framing out a wall is actually fairly simple. You start with two boxes for the top and the bottom. Then we connected those two boxes with two by fours to finish the skeleton of the frame. Next, we created a smaller support frame to house the fireplace. Then we added our studs to the frame. This will make the wall extremely sturdy and will give us something to attach our plywood and timber to. The next day, I went to my second home to pick up supplies for our next day's work. I asked the team members at Home Depot to rip some sheets for me, so I got to witness the giant cutting station for the first time. After getting all of my wood cut and loaded into the car, it was time to head home. For sealing up the mantle, we had to take the existing junction boxes from the wall and we moved them over to the new wooden frame. This is so that we could eventually hide all of our electrical in the cabinets under the bookcases. Enter the angle grinder. After the fireworks show, it was time to add the plywood to our frame. We tacked it up using a brad nailer. Around the fireplace area, we had to make a few bespoke cuts with a jigsaw. Once all the pieces were up, it was time to hide the seams with wood filler. Then it was time to paint. Remember when we moved the junction boxes from the wall to the wooden frame? Now it's time to attach the bookshelves to those junction boxes. We cut holes in the cabinets to match the locations of where we mounted the junction boxes to the frame. Once the holes were cut, we slipped the bookcase over the new junction box, wired the outlets, and screwed the faceplate on. Punch, Punch it. it. The mantle and the bookshelves are complete. It's time to move on to the timbre. Time to go back to our second home to get the last of our supplies. And this time we had a very special guest. Let's go to the hyperlapse. We used a level to ensure that the first piece of timbre was straight. Once it was tacked into the wall using a brad nailer, we used a second piece of timbre as a spacer to keep the slats evenly spaced across the mantle. After the timbre was complete, the next step was to hide all of our seams. We used two one by sixes and a one by five as trim for a seamless look. We added some two by fours above the bookcases for some extra support for the top trim. Last but not least, adding the final piece of trim. Yay! And with that, the wall was complete. Wait, you don't think we'd let you go without showing you some slow-mo glam footage, do you? I know I've said this before, but this was definitely our largest project we've ever taken on, and we couldn't be happier with the results. Not only did we get the moody faux mantle of our dreams, we learned so many skills along the way. I personally learned how to use three new power tools. With that, we'd like to give a huge shout out to Matt. You helped us plan, execute, and laugh the entire time. We could not have done this without you.